Ladies and gentlemen, fellow galactic citizens, greetings. I'm Mike Grontman, Professor of Astronautics. On August 29, 2018, mission control centers at Houston and Moscow noticed that the International Space Station was losing air. When the crew woke up, they found the leak. The investigation discovered the drill hole, 2 mm in diameter, in the orbital module of the Soyuz MS-09 vehicle docked to the station. The crew patched the hole. The orbital module of the vehicle does not bring the cosmonauts and astronauts back to Earth, so this patched hole does not present a danger for the returning crew. However, how much danger does such a hole and a leak at the station present? Let us apply coursework in astronautics to evaluate this. Let us first estimate how much air do we have at the International Space Station. Its pressurized volume is about 930 cubic meters, pressure inside is about 1 atmosphere, and temperature, it is a room temperature, is about 20 degrees C. The molecular weight of air is 29, and gamma is this specific heat ratio is about 1.4. So we can write the equation for the perfect gas and immediately we will get the density of air 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. So this number translates into the total air mass in the station 1120 kilograms. The station is enormous. It's uh, mass of the air there is more than one metric ton. To estimate a leak, uh, the mass flow through the hole, we can uh, use a simplification. We can consider a hole as a converging nozzle with a one-dimensional isentropic flow of a perfect gas and the flow Mach number equals one at the exit. In reality, a hole is not a converging nozzle. The flow of gas would be a little bit less effective through such a hole, and people usually describe such inefficiency through the so-called discharge coefficient that would be, say, 0.8 or 0.9 in our case. But for our purposes, to make an estimate, we can use the assumption of a converging nozzle with a one-dimensional flow. Compressible gas dynamics informs us on the properties of the gas at such a configuration, and the temperature at the exit would be 244 degrees Kelvin, or approximately minus 30 degrees C. This would immediately give us the speed of sound at the exit, which equals to the speed of the air leaving the hole. So this would be about 313 meters per second. And also we can get the equation for the density of the gas at the exit, at the exit of the hole, which would be 0 0.76 kilograms per cubic meter. So the hole diameter let us assume to be 2 millimeters, so we can translate this immediately, uh, the area, we we'll obtain the area in the square meters, and the mass flow through the hole would be the density at the exit times speed of the air at the exit and times the area of the exit. So plugging the numbers there, we will get the leak rate, the mass m dot mass flow rate 0.75 grams per second which is a little bit less than one gram per second now this leak rate translates that in the following very important numbers that one kilogram of air of the international space station would be lost in roughly 0.4 hours or a little bit more than 20 minutes and to lose 1% of the station air would have taken a little bit more than 4 hours. So this slow leak rate, or this small effect on the total 
mass of the gas and the pressure inside the station explain why the mission control did not immediately wake up the crew of the International Space Station when the leak was detected. The hole in the International Space Station would serve as a little thruster. We can readily calculate its thrust. First of all, compressible gas dynamics gives us the pressure at the exit of the hole, which would be about 0.5, one half of one atmosphere. So we can calculate the equivalent exhaust velocity, which would be about 540 meters per second, and specific impulse of our small thruster would be close to 55 seconds. Thrust produced is 0.4 Newton. The International Space Station is a very large object. Its mass is about 400 metric ton. So its acceleration due to this leaking hole from the station would be about 10 to the minus 6 meters per square second, which translates into the velocity increment accumulated during one day to a little bit less than 0.1 meter per second. So now let's consider what will happen with time if we have such a leak for a long time. Let's assume that we have a station with the mass inside as a function of time, density as a function of time, and let's assume that temperature remains constant inside the station. So we can write the equation for m dot or mass flow rate here, expressing it through the area of the hole A star, uh, the nature of the air inside the station uh, expressed through gamma, the ratio of specific heats and the gas constant R, and pressure and temperature inside the station. So noting the expression for the speed of sound uh, corresponding to the temperature T0 inside of station and noting that density of air in the station is simply mass, total mass of air divided by the volume, we can rearrange this equation and get the direct expression or differential equation for the changing mass inside of station as a function of time. And this e expression could be simplified as shown here, dm divided by m equals minus g, coefficient g times dt, where g is shown at the bottom. It is approximately 6.7, 10 to the minus 7 second. This uh, very simple differential equation gives us uh, the solution where the mass of the air inside of station as a function of time equals m naught, the initial air mass, times exponential minus gt, or if I replace g by its inverse, the basically the characteristic time for air to leak through a hole in the station, then this equation for the mass time-dependent mass of air in the station can be expressed as m0 times exponential minus time divided by the characteristic time. The characteristic time tau is about 400 hours. More video clips on satellite orbits and space technology at astronauticsnow.com/vp. Thank you for watching.